Now, I was told um, designing for events, actually not in terms of event management now, was the space was as far back as when companies started. But professional event management, most times when you beat them and say, oh, when do you think it started? I don't think, personally, I don't think it goes beyond maybe 20 years, maybe 25 or some people that we don't really know. And I've met a few people who started maybe two or three years before. Having said that, because of where events is and the potential that event management has, the fact is it will keep growing and we need more space. It's a year ahead, and you're wondering, okay, next event, you go to another center, I'm booked a year ahead, I'm booked a year ahead, and you're like, okay, so where do we get venues? And I can tell you that it's not like the you don't have event venues around. If you go to Kenya, for instance, you will see so many venues, including hotels, proper tents and marquees and things like that. So, it tells us personally that we don't have, we need to do more. But having said that, it's not just about doing more, building just any kind of event venue. It's about building that venue or that space that would really meet our needs. That would be customized for us personally. So the first slide, please. I'm not going to bore you with so many details. So I have like five major things I'm talking about. And you can see it, I don't have my glasses, so I have to as much as possible squint. So we're talking about uh, safety, sound, space, cooling and cost, then about the outdoor. Now, as I said earlier on, it has to be tailored to our own needs. Now, um, a lot of times when we talk about any particular product or thing, we're quick to say, oh, abroad, it, this is what entails in the UK, this is in the US, in Dubai. Yes, they are good in terms of innovation and all, but the very idea is not just doing something stupid or spectacular. It's about meeting a particular need. If in the industry, we decide to count the venues that really would meet the standard. For everybody wants to be at City People Awards, whether event planners, celebrity. In fact, this year they had two phase two was it was a disaster. The fact that people didn't die, I believe, was just God. And at that time, we started discussing why we thought it went that far. Number one, it's almost like saying oh, you're in the you're a bushfire, why does it really happen? Wind, the grass is dry and everything. So material is important when it comes to safety. What kind of material are you using to build? Because you know if you use a lot of equipment that have to do with electricity. And electricity at the moment in Nigeria for places can go high, go low. How many places have step down really? So you don't know what surge is going through it. You have the bands there, you have pyrotechnic display at one end. We have so many things that we plug. Everybody wants bubble effects, depending on what kind of event you're doing. Even when it's a corporate event, you have wall wash lights and packet lights in different corners to change the ambience of the place. And so you have so many things plugged in. And if something just sparks up, just a little electricity, and then it, it goes into you know, a wildfire, just like that, it means that life should have been lost that day. So it's pretty important. So for me, I'm like, okay, the material in the first place, and then a lot of times you go to some venues, maybe because they were not built for that particular purpose, you don't see any exit plan. You just walk into a room, you can't go out, and there are a lot of people, and you know it's just the nature of man, even animals. If something happens now, God forbid, everybody's just going to, you're not going to take okay, in a straight order, except you have practice or drills regularly here. You're just going to see people running, that's why you remember all oh, my children, oh Lord. And then we start flying through the window. So you don't mind, stampedes will happen. But when you go to Venice, that's why I like, a lot of people say, oh, because they have partners, they go hotel. I'm not saying they're perfect, but you've got everything right. But when you get there, you have like dual doors at the other side that it is doubly written. And you have the instructions there in case of an emergency. So you know, it will take a lot for us to, for anything to happen and we won't be able to move out. So a lot of times that also you know comes into play. And safety first of all, I put safety as number one because really if you go for an event, you don't want to lose lives. 
and a lot of times we don't think about it in Nigeria, we just go there and we enjoy ourselves and we think. That's why for some events that we have at dogs, it's important that we even have you know, medical personnel on ground. Of course, sometimes we tell you, I ah, just want to spend the money. It's not that. We're having an event where they are 60, 70 year old and then they can't even complain. I feel like, you know, my heart is racing. I don't want anybody to die at my event. We have to have the doctor say, okay, please, could you just attend first aid at least? So those are one of the things that, you know, one of the things that we want to look at. What you know, sound resonate and all that. But for an event venue where you will have other purposes, maybe like you have an office, maybe on the floor there's um, your event space, there's an office here or there, you want to be sure that the sound within the event venue is not going to disturb every other thing. Imagine if this was an event hall and today we're not having a corporate event, we're probably having a party. You're not going to tell my band to stop playing because you have a library at the other end. And you want the people at the library to also be able to concentrate on what they're doing. So if your venue is dual purpose, you need to think about how do I make sure that this place is soundproof or almost soundproof. So that it doesn't disturb every other business there. If you have just even strictly event venues, you go to a place like Unilab, University of Lagos. They have halls because I mean everybody's looking for. In fact, they have hall A, B, C. They have the students' hall where you can use and then strictly event halls. You get there and if you're having a wedding, you can literally be dancing to the music of the other hall. If they are here over here and they are doing their thing, the other people are Hebrew. Believe me, as a bride and group, you can be doing that low to your Yoruba, Yoruba band. Because you can literally hear them. There's no, it's just a thin thing like that. But imagine if someone was trying to meet on the other side. So you have to think about that. If the purpose is dual and there are other businesses there, or there's a library close by, there's an office, you want to be sure that the sound is fine. Apart from that, because Dorset does a lot of sound, light, screen, some of the concerns we have is how strong is the place? Because sound, you know, gives out vibration. Where your speakers are, most times if you go to some event venues where you are standing not too far from the speaker, if you be, even if you don't, if you take your shoes off, you can feel like, what's happening? There's something vibrating, maybe it's my phone. Sound is really bad. And sometimes you think, if it continues for a couple of years, this place will one day just collapse. And they won't know why. They just say, okay, maybe it's so standard, or it might be. But sound can shake a place up and piece by bit, like erosion, just start picking off part of that building until some, someday the building can't take it anymore. There are some venues in Lagos that are popular. I want to you know, mention some of them are government you know, uh, halls. And you get there and your first thought is this place is so ugly. How do I cover it up? And then you, you have to sit down and start planning. Okay, maybe we pleat it. We skirt it in a way. So that when we skirt it, they won't see anything. Then, are you sure you can climb? Maybe you skirt the other part too separately. Maybe, are you sure you won't skirt the stage part too? Just because, or maybe we should just put mood lights. So the color, People will not get it when they walk in. That shouldn't be it. Someone should be able to come into your hall and say, wow, I can, wow, my event will be fantastic here. Without doing anything. If you go to Civic Center, I don't know if you know Civic Center. If you enter Civic Center, most people don't want to please anything on the mirrors. Why would you want to do that? Even if you please, sometimes when you have formal events, you don't even want to please all those sides. You just put your balance down, maybe in the middle, wash some lights and all that, and you are feeling spoofy already. So the very idea is that, first of all, beautiful, as much as possible, high. If it's high, you're able to use chandeliers and things like that. You don't walk into a place and the chandelier is touching the head of your clients. It's ridiculous. And then you go to some spaces, you see pillars in the middle. And then you as the planner, because you will, of course, just in case your client decides that this is the one that needs to be. That's my budget, or it's my uncle's hall. Walk into the hall, and then some people don't get it, but you yourself are trying to, and they are wondering what you're peeping at. 
the a very high guy is wondering if they sit me here with I see and they you know read. But in the middle of this beautiful thing that I'm in front, what's gonna happen to this pillar? Should I wrap it? Should I maybe that would we we'll just pretend like it's not there? Why would we have to pretend that it's not there? So if we're creating a space, it should be realistic. If you're doing smaller spaces where, like I walked into this space, there's some events you can have here, you can have cocktail, people moving around, looking at, and then tables out, chairs out, fantastic high stools, maybe in the middle, where they can put their drinks or paper or you know, some glass, you just make it look beautiful. But if you're doing a proper event, you want to have concerts or if not concerts, maybe dinners and things like that, you want a wider space, you want something big, clean, nice, you know, that people can have fun in. Then um, I also mentioned a couple of things here, you know, apart from, apart from that, that the pathway is natural light, yes, I was going to mention that, as much as possible, access to this natural light, so that even if all the chandeliers are not on, it's just fantastic. It's something that I want to see, I want to see happen. I want to go to cooling and cost. Now, in fact, I don't know, maybe because I'm not, I'm trying to get used to a but I feel like it's painfully hot. <laughs> painfully. Like right now, I'm trying not to swallow myself on the AC like three hours before your event. Because we can't bank on PHCM, as we call it, NEPA, Keja Electric, you know, whatever different names. You can't. So you have to make sure that you have source of power, right? And if you have social power, if you're using diesel, you're there spending a lot of hours on end. And you have, if you see massive ACs within a event venue, and sometimes you're still, whew, because you have some events at 3,000 guests, depending on what kind of venue, 5,000 guests, and then you, you feel like you can't breathe. But if something is done to, you know, I think in terms of material, because I was talking to someone and said, you know, you can this is such a way, even here, that will make your cooling easier. The place itself, depending on the weather, is cool, can absorb heat. I was like, for real, like the wall, as opposed to it bouncing off me literally within the house. I was like, yeah, it's possible. If that's possible, that means I don't have to spend as much on cooling. It's not like I will spend, but I know that I can do much more. Depending on, if you're under a tent, for instance, it's hot. You know the canopy we used to use, the normal canopy, you are all right and you're like, even with fan. So the advent of mystic fan came around where they put water in it and make sure that you know, splash you a bit of water so you feel like you're cool and then you're cool and bad. So I think those are some of the things that are quite important to us as a, I, I know most event managers, if you ask them, you probably go along the same lines, you know, for the cooling and the costing. Now, earlier on, I also spoke about, um, I spoke about um, the safety. I don't know if I will realize that. Trees actually help. Trees help. It helps to have, you know, greenery around you. It really does help. Because that day, I think we were trying to do a breakdown on what happened at City Report. And we realized that, apart from just being the fabrics that they used, the place, the material that was rubber like that was there, there was nothing. Everything was just combustible. There were, there were no trees, of course, everything is now mechanical, we won't try to build things, like the skyscraper ish, no plants. So for me, I think, number one, there should be as much as possible. Don't take away nature totally. It doesn't, why, why do we go to parks? Abuja just been going around like I've never seen parks before. Not that there was one of um, the parks, Kano Park, it belongs to Lagos State. And when we got there, they had, of course, rules and regulations. You can't get beyond this point on the lawn, you can't put your tent on the lawn, and things like that. But realistically, when we got there ourselves, it was difficult for us to even play the games on the lawn. They had to tell us, please, no, 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 you can at least do your games on the lawn and team building games. Because it was that lovely, we didn't want to upset the place. So for me, my dream place will be that place that I will walk in and it will just be a lot of greenery, fantastic, and there will be space. Parking space, it's, it's, I don't know, I think maybe it's just land we're considering, 
I know that it is important that you have cases to pack, you don't want to pack on the roads. So space not just within, as I've said earlier, but also within you know the compound where people are, where they can park. At least have you know something. Let there be space, let there be room. Because I believe that when you have enough room, there's even room to breathe. Because I mentioned earlier having access to natural light. If you have access to natural light, really, you have access to natural light, you have access to green, you have a huge space in there, you have outside where people can park. Believe me, I know that nobody, people will be, they would recommend the event venue anytime. And, when, and that's the kind of event venue you want, where if you are booked back to back, and people have to say, okay, so next year, and you're like, oh, are you sure that we have next year? Two years, people are already booked. And it happens in Lagos, but not because the venue is all that, but because we don't have enough. So, most of what I mentioned, our basic, our basic needs. I said I will not go you know, and bore you with all the stories. But the fact is, if we truly just sit down, because you can design for yourself what you have in your mind, you can come to me and say, and give me an idea that this will be so beautiful. Just like an event planner, you can be tempted to manage your own event, the event that suits me. Because you're like, ah, I will be one. Fantastic. I went for uh, I was at the panel yesterday, they were asking us some questions for an international event. And those some of the people on the panel said, you know, I've met some planners that they are planning their own thing, they're not planning our event. I said, what do you mean? Like, a planner is telling you, this is what we have to do, that's the way it's done, we have to. I said, because I love crystals and candles, doesn't mean anybody else would. For a formal event, because I want it to be plain and I don't want drapings, because to me, I'm like, okay, if you wash it with light, it's so beautiful, put your A client might come and say, I want it pleated, you understand? So I wasn't at the presentation yesterday, but I was sent some of the things, and when I saw it, that's why I wrote, there was a slide at the end that I wrote in the future. And I said, for me, this is the future, because when I write, after writing all the things, I like, okay, this is what we want, this is what we want. And when I saw it, I said, Sefini. That was what came out of my mind, no, Sefini, realistically. Because what am I talking about? Is it the greenery? Is it access? Is it what am I talking about? And then they started explaining to me what the materials are made of, you know, what they can do. And I said, wow, this is it. This is the future. The future is now. The future is really now. And um, so um, that's my teeny really bit of contribution. But I would like to say a very big thank you. For being, on, for you know, giving us this platform because really I believe honestly that this is history in the making. You know, so when it happens, I'm able to say I was at the presentation, but before they started the foundation, you know, I was there. You know, just like I, I knew the president no way to school. So that kind of.